So the type of the permutation given by the product of these cycles 1, 3, 7, 2, 4, 5, 10, 9 and uh, 6, 8, 11 is, uh, you know, is of type 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? So why is that? Well, there is precisely uh, one, uh, you know, uh, one cycle. There is no two cycles in this. There are two, uh, three cycles, one, three, seven, and six, eight, eleven. There is one four cycle, two, four, five, ten. And uh, there is no other larger cycle. So all these values up to eleven are going to be all zeros. You cannot have anything larger than eleven because the number of elements is eleven. Now, once you have uh, such a type, right? So then we can define the cycle indicator monomial, right? Uh, of pi uh, given by, let's say, z pi is equal to z1 raised to c1, z2 raised to c2, etc., z1 raised to cn. So this tells immediately what is the cycle structure, right? Look at the coefficient of zi that will be telling the, the i cycles, right? The, uh, and not the coefficient, the exponent of zi will tell you the uh, number of i cycles. So, uh, given uh, now uh, a group of symmetries, let us define the cycle index polynomial of the group as Zg is equal to Zg of, uh, let us say, Z1 to Zn, right? It's denoted by uh, Zg uh, of Z1 to Zn, uh, is uh, 1 by order of G, summation over all the permutations in G Z pi, right? So, the sum of all these monomials, Right, normalized by uh, the order of G. Right, so this is uh, the cycle index polynomial of the group G. So this uh, will be very useful. We will we will we will see how this cycle index uh, corresponds to uh, the counting of colorings uh, that we are going to do. So uh, as an example, let us say that uh, we have the uh, four cycle X uh, with, with the vertices A, B, C, D. And uh, look at the group of rotations of uh, the cycle, right? So what is uh, what is the cycle index uh, polynomial? So Zg is 1 by uh, uh, order of G, which is 4. Now, Z1 raised to 4. Why is it Z1 raised to 4? Because, uh, you know, there is the, you know, the identity uh, has exactly four cycles, right? Then uh, Z2 raised to 2 because, you know, you look at the generator, the square of the generator, you will see that uh, you will have two cycles of length 2. So, it is Z2 raised to 2. Uh, and then uh, uh, you will get uh, uh, 2 times Z4 because you will, you will see that the generator and its inverse are uh, uh, 1 cycles. So, uh, are 4 cycles uh, and uh, uh, there are 2 of them. So, that will tell you. Uh, this uh, uh, this cycle index polynomial is 1 by 4 into z1 raised to 4 plus z2 square plus 2 uh, z4. Okay. <clears throat> now, as a homework, uh, you can you can uh, look at uh, uh, the example to find zh where uh, h is the rotations and reflections. Okay. So instead of just the rotations, suppose we also allow uh, reflections. Then uh, we will see that uh, Zg is actually equal to, uh, I mean, uh, Zh will be uh, whatever it is. So count, uh, find that uh, as a homework. We come to the main uh, theorem that we wanted to prove, which is uh, Polius theorem. So Polius theorem, uh, again, uh, as we as we noted before, what we wanted to do was to count. Uh, you know, uh, inequivalent colorings where the number of colorings is given, right? So let X be uh, an n-element set and G uh, be a group of symmetries of X. Now, let let us consider uh, a set of colors C, which is R1, R2, etc. Uh, going on, right? Whatever. Uh, some set of uh, colors. Now, it could be finite or infinite. Uh, but we will just uh, take it to be uh, infinite at the, at the time uh, being. Now, look at the number of, uh, you know, inequivalent colorings under the action of G, uh, where, uh, you know, the color, let's say, Rj, appears exactly Ij times, 
okay so that is denoted by eta of i1 i2 etc so eta of i1 i2 etc says that okay color r1 appears i1 times r2 appears i2 times etc rj appears ij times right so look at the such uh, colorings and then see under the action of the how many inequivalent colorings are there okay now let us define uh, fg of r1 r2 etc right where the you know the colors uh, are the variables uh, of the fg a summation over all the uh, you know uh, tuples i mean like i1 i2 etc right eta of i1 uh, i2 etc r1 raised to i1 r2 raised to i2 etc. so which means that the coefficient of r1 raised to i1 r2 raised to i2 etc right E is the number of inequivalent colorings where R J appears I J times, and sum over all these, and uh, you will get this uh, this uh, uh, polynomial, right? So if you look at, uh, I mean, it need not be a polynomial if if uh, you know if C is finite, then it will be a polynomial. If it is not finite, then you will get a power series, right? So you will see that uh, this is basically a generating uh, series, and uh, uh and then uh, uh, you know we can uh, we can uh, uh, we can look at uh, this and uh, the coefficient of uh, uh, this in the series uh, this time in the series will be precisely the uh, number of such colorings right inequivalent i mean that is that is the generation of the uh, uh, that is the definition of the generating function then fg of r1 r2 etc right is actually equal to the cycle index zg right of the group cycle index of the group Z, zg uh, where uh, z uh, you know set i is substituted by summation uh, uh, r r j raised to i okay z i is substituted by summation r j raised to i so zg of r1 plus r2 plus etc uh, comma r1 square plus r2 square plus etc comma r r1 q plus r3 r2 q plus etc comma etc right so this is what uh, uh, fg is so so that is the what the theorem says you know the theorem says that uh, you know there is a direct relation between the cycle index of the group right and the and the counting of this uh, inequivalent colorings where the number of colorings are uh, fixed I mean, number of uh, occurrence of each color is uh, a fixed uh, tuple. So, how do you prove this? So, to prove this, uh, suppose uh, I1 plus I2 plus etc. is equal to n, right? So, of course, uh, you know, when we have only n elements, we cannot use more than n colors, right? So, even though, you know, the set of colors is infinite, the tuple that we are going to consider which is going to contribute anything is going to be uh, is going to be uh, always adding to uh, n which is the cardinality of x right so let i1 plus i2 plus i equal to n and uh, uh, you know ij is of course greater than equal to zero and the tuple i1 i2 etc is uh, denoted by i cap okay now let's let us say that C i cap denotes the set of all colorings where the number of colors, a number of times the color R j appears is exactly i j. Right? So, uh, as I as I mentioned before, you know, the the permutations can only take such colorings, uh, you know, uh, in in the colorings in C i to uh, again colorings in C i because you know, the number of times a color occurs cannot be changed by the permutations. Right? So. <coughs> So therefore, we can see that uh, the the group G, whatever is the you know symmetric uh, subgroup of the symmetric group we are taking, that group G acts on uh, you know on this uh, you know the uh, restricted coloring C i cap. Uh, that is that you know any any permutation pi uh, if you take and any coloring in C i cap you take right pi dot f is uh, again an element of C i cap. And uh, you know, so this this action of uh, the you know the restricted action of this group, right? Uh, I mean, no, of, of each of these permutations, let us say it is denoted by uh, pi i cap, right? 
So the action of phi on uh, C i cap is denoted by phi i cap. Because because phi acts on each of uh, you know so for each i cap uh, you know C i cap uh, you know basically uh, gives a partition of all such colorings and then uh, for each uh, you know uh, each partition you know the the uh, the, uh, the permutations acts within that partition right so that is what uh, we are we are saying before so let pi a cap be this particular action of uh, pi on i cap. Now we want to apply Burnside's lemma, so therefore uh, we want to find the uh, cardinality of fix of uh, pi i cap. Right? Now how do you find the cardinality of fix of i cap? So if you if you look at any coloring, uh, then this coloring uh, is fixed by pi i cap only if the uh, you know the cycle structure of pi is such that, right? In in any cycle uh, of pi, all the elements get the same color in th by this coloring f. Right? So if you are looking at a coloring f. Then all elements of this particular cycle that we are looking at pi should be given the same color by the f, right? Otherwise, you know, when you rotate it, it is going to give a different color, right? So uh, therefore, uh, that will be the same. And of course, you know, the color rj must appear exactly ij times because uh, by definition, right? You know, i in i cap, the you know the action of uh, pi in i cap is going to uh, basically map, uh, you know, a set of uh, vertices with the same color to some other set of vertices, right? Exactly the same number. So, with this observation, let us define uh, h pi to be the product over all, all j, r1 uh, raised to j, r2 uh, raised to j plus etc. whole power cj of pi, where cj of pi is the number of j cycles in pi, right? So, so pi is the uh, permutation which is acting then correspondingly we define h pi to be the uh, you know the polynomial product uh, r1 raised to j plus r2 raised to j plus etc whole raised to cj of pi uh, over all, all, all possible j right now let us see what happens uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, h pi right see when you when you take the expansion of uh, you know of of this uh, product Right, you will get uh, you know uh, different monomials, right? That is what the polynomial is, right? It's a sum of monomials. Now, how do we get one of these monomials? So to get a monomial like this, we have to choose some term, right? Let's say some R k raised j from each of the factors, right? So each factor in this product, we have to choose some uh, some element, right? So so when you, when you expand out, write all these things, or you know, over all the j, you write R one raised j plus etc into r1 raised to j plus etc cj times uh, then uh, you know uh, like this for j is equal to 1 then j equal to 2 j equal to 3 etc right so we do this for all possible uh, uh, j and then we get this huge uh, uh, you know uh, product of uh, different uh, sums and then uh, a monomial in the in the whole product is going to come from uh, by choosing some rk raised j from each of these terms now, what is the choice of RK raised to J size? RK denotes, right, it is a variable which denotes the color RK, right? So, RK raised to J says that some J cycle, right, uh, you know, is colored with RK, right? All the elements in some J cycle is, is uh, getting the color RK. Now, we know that uh, in this product, right, we have exactly uh, cj times you can take some uh, you know some ri raised to j we can uh, choose exactly cj times right so therefore choosing a term, a term like you know of, of the type rk raised j from every factor says that we are we are going to color uh, you know the set uh, x that we are coloring right such that every uh, cycle right uh, is going to be monochromatic right? that is what uh, it comes to so the, all elements of the cycle get the same color, right? Uh, that uh, every cycle is monochromatic. Now the product of these terms will be uh, some monomial, right? Like something like R1 raised J1, R2 raised J2, etc. Where we have used the color RK uh, number of uh, JK times, right? So this this corresponds to what our monomial we are looking at. Now it follows that the coefficient of 
coefficient of this time that we are looking at r1 ratio j1 uh, r2 ratio j2 etc is actually equal to the number of permutations uh, uh, number of uh, elements fixed by the permutation uh, pi a cap right the, the the action of pi is uh, pi a cap right so that the, by this action how many uh, what is the fix of uh, pi a cap that is precisely uh, precisely the coefficient of R1 raised to J1, R2 raised to J2, etc. So that is that was the uh, claim that we want to make. The coefficient of R1 raised to J1, uh, R1 raised to let's say I1, uh, R2 raised to I2, etc. In S pi is fix of uh, pi I cap. Right. Now, uh, so therefore, uh, we can write H pi now as summation over all i cap right uh, the cardinality of fix of uh, pi i cap uh, with the uh, you know with the uh, monomial r1 raised to i1 r2 raised to i2 etc right so this is what s pi is right this is what we just uh, just argued right before so now we can apply uh, you know uh, the result that is uh, 1 by order of g summation over all pi belongs to g s pi is actually equal to Summation over all pi belongs to G. Product uh, over J, right, which was the you know, H pi uh, was written like this R1 raised to J plus R2 raised to J plus etc. Cj pi. Now, what is this, right? This is ZG of R1 plus R2 plus etc. R1 square plus R2 square plus etc. Uh, uh, like, uh, yeah. So for uh, substituting for each ri with r1, uh, you know, uh, like uh, what, like yeah. So the the first time is r1 plus r2 plus etc. Second time is r1 square plus r2 square plus etc. Uh, and going on like like this. But now this is uh, summation overall. Uh, this is summation over all uh, i cap, right? Like uh, where uh, where uh, where you know I so writing writing this uh, you know in in another fashion we can write uh, is a summation over all i cap one by uh, order of g summation over all uh, all the permutations in g cardinality of fix of pi i cap. Uh, x1 raised to i1, uh, I mean, not x1, right? Uh, what was that? r1 raised to, uh, this is supposed to be r1. r1 raised to i1, r2 raised to i2, etc. Why is this? Uh, Because uh, we are we are we are substituting, uh, you know, for h pi, right, is equal to h pi is equal to uh, summation over all i cap, uh, you know, uh, or you know, order of uh, fix of uh, pi i cap uh, r1 raised to i1 etc. Uh, in this uh, in this identity, right? So by substituting that, we will get this. But now, what is the coefficient of this uh, term in this summation, right? This is by Burnside's lemma. This is precisely the number of orbits of uh, pi a cap, right? That is how uh, uh, the Burnside's lemma uh, was uh, stated. So therefore, uh, this is precisely the number of inequivalent color rings using color uh, R j total of uh, i j times, right? So that is that is what the coefficient of the monomial means. So this is what uh, we wanted to prove, right? So so we proved uh, Polya's theorem. Uh, by uh, as an application of Burnside's lemma. Okay, so what we proved is that uh, you know the number of uh, inequivalent colorings, right? Uh, where uh, you know uh, the the number of times uh, the color R i occurs uh, is given by the uh, tuple uh, i one i two etc. is uh, obtained. Uh, is obtained uh, by, you know, uh, obtained by looking at the cycle uh, index polynomial uh, of the group G, right, Zg, 
and uh, for the variable uh, you know for the for the variable uh, z i i replace it by summation uh, rj raised to i right so uh, this will this will uh, uh, give you the uh, the the uh, the generating function uh, of uh, this kind of coloring right? so that is what uh, polya theorem is about so now uh, let us look at uh, some example so, so the, you know go, go back to this make uh, sure that you you understand the theorem well and then uh, we can look at the example so one of the standard uh, examples that uh, you give uh, is that of uh, uh, counting of necklaces so a necklace uh, of length l is i think we mentioned this in one of the classes long time before it's a circular arrangement of uh, let us say uh, colored beads. So we were looking at another type of necklaces that time, where you know, where the you know instead of beads we were using cowrie shells and something like that, uh, which is slightly uh, different in some sense. But uh, uh, for the time being, uh, we will as uh, we have a uniform uh, circular beads. So we have a circular arrangement of these uh, beads, and uh, we will assume that when we make the necklace. The distance between, uh, you know, uh, you know, so in the circular necklace, the distance between any two is the same, so that you get a regular, uh, you know, uh, regular polygon with uh, with L uh, vertices, right, as the necklace. Now, two necklaces are the same if uh, one can be obtained by a cyclic rotation of the other, right? So this uh, this is something that we will assume. This is the group action that we have, the symmetry. Then uh, the number of inequivalent uh, n colored necklaces, if you are going to color the necklaces, uh, the, the beads with uh, uh, you know, any of the n colors, it is given by 1 by L summation over all uh, D uh, that divides L, phi of L by D, n raised to D. Okay? So this is the claim. Okay? So the number of inequivalent n colored necklaces is given by 1 by L, where the length of the necklace is L summation over all d dividing l right so all the divisors of l phi of l by d phi is the euler function so l by d is of course because d is a divisor l by d is a uh, an integer again now uh, for this integer look at the euler uh, you know the number of uh, numbers less than uh, that and uh, co prime to it right so uh, where the gcd of that number and uh, uh, l by d is 1 right so that is the Euler phi function, uh, which is the coefficient of n raised to d. So this is what we want to prove. How do you go about proving this? So if you want to apply apply Polya theorem, we want to look at the cycle index uh, of the group. So let us find the cycle index of the group that we are looking at. Right? The group is the uh, group of rotations. Right? So for so for the L cycle. So let us let us say that you know our set. Uh, uh, is uh, the set of elements 1, 2, etc. L uh, is the set of beads and uh, uh, you know the group of rotations of the necklace are generated by the permutation because as we as we mentioned the rotations are generated by the single uh, uh, permutation which is uh, given by 1 going to 2, 2 going to 3, etc. Uh, uh, up to L. So if, if this is the generator then the group G is given by 1 comma pi pi square etc pi raise L minus 1, where pi raise L is equal to 1, right? Identity. Now, what is the cycle structure for permutations in G? So this is a very interesting uh, example. So, so can you think of uh, some nice properties of the uh, cycle structures of the permutations in G, right? So if you are looking at the group of rotations, what can you say about the cycle structure? So it turns out that uh, you know if you if you take any permutation in in G, the there will be uh, you know there will be uh, several uh, you know the, you know the, the number of uh, so there is there is only one cycle type right, you know cycle of some length and that will appear many times okay. So all the cycles in, in each of the permutations will have the same length. That is what I wanted to say. So, so all the permutations will have the same length. So can you think of why? 
okay so or, or can you prove uh, this is true right for every permutation in g uh, all all its uh, you know uh, cycle lengths will be the same so if you if you write any permutation in g as a as a uh, as a product of cycles then all the cycles will have the exactly the same length so prove this so so why is this so well if you if you if you look at the rotation and then try to represent it as like you know uh, using some modulo arithmetic you will you can easily prove this and uh, observe that like if sigma is pi where pi is a generator pi raised to m then uh, sigma has exactly gcd of m comma l cycles of length l by gcd of m comma l so this is an even more refined claim uh, so uh, so prove this. Okay. Now, once you have this, we can apply Polya's theorem, right? Polya's theorem says that once you have the cycle structure, we can directly apply this, right? So therefore, I have one by L summation, uh, you know, m equal to one to L, n raised to g c d of m comma L, uh, inequivalent, uh, you know, uh, colored necklaces, right? So this is by Polya's theorem. But what we know is that GCD of m comma l is equal to d if and only if, right? Uh, m one less than or equal to uh, m by d less than or equal to l by d, and uh, GCD of m by d comma l by d is equal to one. Okay. So using this, uh, you know, we can write uh, this same summation as sum over all the divisors, right? So sum over all the divisors of l, one by l summation. Uh, d dividing L. Now, n raised to d, how many times it appears? It appears exactly pi of L by d times because those many uh, times will be, uh, you know, those many numbers will be co prime to, uh, co prime to, uh, uh, co prime to, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, copper entity, right? So therefore, uh, therefore, uh, therefore, we get, uh, uh, you know, we we can write this uh, as uh, in this form. And uh, now, so this is what we were asked to prove. What was it? Yeah. So this is what we were asked to prove, right? Now, uh, as a further observation. The you know the the property of the cycle structure of the permutations in G we have the cycle ind indicator right Z G of Z one Z two Z three Z L uh, is uh, written by one over L summation D dividing L pi of L by D uh, Z raised to D uh, you know Z L by D uh, whole raised to D right this again directly follows from the uh, property of the cycle structure because all the other terms will be disappearing they will not. Uh, be here right so therefore uh, we will get exactly this and but now i can write it also as 1 by l summation d dividing l phi of d z d raised to l by d because you know i'm just exchanging d and l by d because they are just devices if d is a divider uh, divisor l by d is also divisor so i can write it in either of these forms so so we will see that like you know the connection between uh you know z g and the uh, and this, uh, this form, right? So, <clears throat> so uh, it follows that Fg of R1, R2. So we wanted to find out Fg, right? You know, the entire uh, uh, generating function we want to find out. We can write Fg of R1, R2, etc. as 1 by L summation D dividing L, phi of D. Then, uh, you know, you replace uh, this Zd by the corresponding R1 raised to, uh, uh, you know, D plus R2 raised to D plus etc. We said that Zi is replaced by R1 raised to i plus R2 raised to i plus etc. So in this case, we have only Zd. So we have R1 raised to d plus R2 raised to d plus etc. whole raised to. So this is this is how uh, we use uh, Polya's theorem. And uh, here are some homework questions. Show that uh, summation overall uh, d divisors of L, pi of L by d uh, equal to L. And the second question asks you to uh, show that if we allow uh, flipping uh, of necklaces uh, as well as rotations, right? Instead of the just rotations, we also allow flipping or, or taking mirror images. Find the cycle indicators and the colored necklaces, okay? 
So I'll try to solve this question. And the third question is that uh, you want to count the inequivalent colorings of a set of uh, you know L elements using n colors under the action of the entire uh, you know the full symmetric group Sx. Then uh, show that if uh, you know uh, summation i times ci is equal to L, then the number of permutations in SL right. Uh, with the ci cycles of length i is given by l factorial divided by 1 raised to c1 uh, c1 factorial 2 raised to c2 c2 factorial etc etc so these questions are your uh, homework questions so with that uh, we uh, wind up the uh, topic on uh, topic on uh, uh, we can do more on this, but uh, let us let us stop uh, with this uh, for the time being. Uh, I will uh, try to give you more uh, questions if you want. Uh, there are there are several interesting questions one can, but uh, at the moment uh, these are your homework questions, and then uh, I will uh, come up with more questions and send you uh, soon.